when you look at the last year, uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster since Tokyo. Um, coming off the back of that, I kind of went into a almost a rut that I never thought I would through sport. So I think, yeah, maybe taking a bit of a step back from social media probably helped me in that situation, but also having the opportunity to then, when I, when the time was right to come out, talk about it, well, it was a big thing for me. Like I never really spoke to anyone really about how I felt. So it was, it was a huge thing, just even a huge thing talking to, to Leah and talking to my family, talking to the people close to me. So then to then, you know, sit down and have a chat with like publicly was huge. And in that dismount on Pummel, I just I genuinely couldn't believe I'd done it. I'd retained my world titles, I'd retained my Olympic title now, and it was more than I ever dreamt of doing, more than I ever expected that I'd do in my gymnastics career. I'd do it because I love it. And there was a moment where I felt, you know, I'm content, and I think that, I think that's me done. And I felt, if I finished here, then I would finish on a high. It would definitely be a high. I, I got to a point, I had conversations, I, I chatted with Leah, I chatted with my, my whole family and, and said that I made a decision to stop. It's almost been my identity. It's been what I've done for 22 years um, without stopping. And it's, it's gymnastics is me, it's what I know, it's what I did. You had a lot to give up. Yeah. And Leah kept saying, like, so many times, like, I was, I was obviously questioned on it, like, are you sure, blah, 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 and I'd always, I'm, I'm done. I fell into a place, into like this rut where I just lost all motivation for everything. Uh, I felt sluggish every single day. I was in this place where I just didn't want to do anything. I got to a point, I remember sitting on the sofa and I was just getting upset chatting to Leah um, because I, I felt like a complete waste of space. Like, I do try not to be too hard on myself, but even now I'm even, annoyed at myself for, for falling in that gap and, and falling into that position because the worst thing about it was, was I was sitting there feeling useless, like a waste of space, the failure. I even got a blood test because I was just feeling awful every single day. Um, and a blood test come back, I was absolutely fine. So yeah, not too long ago, sitting down with the BBC was a huge thing. It was something that, you know, that the morning of it, I was, I was pretty nervous because it was, almost chatting about something that I've never spoke about before, a topic that I have never been open and honest with, with anyone, but also almost not open and honest with myself in terms of just having that kind of real, raw chat. And I think um, there's so many reasons why I wanted to do it, because one huge thing was actually realise that, you know, as I started to realise that I was struggling, I was in that kind of big rut of feeling completely lost, actually talking and building up to courage to actually talk to Leah, talk to the people around me, talk to my family. It's done me wonders, like, I can't even explain how much it helped. So then to obviously push myself and almost, almost go that step further and talk publicly, you know, sit down with the BBC and just have a casual chat about it. I wanted it to be casual and just, you know, it was in my own environment, so it was in my living room. Um, that's how I wanted it to be because I wanted it just for me to have the opportunity to get out there because I knew not only you know, for me, I felt more refreshed the more I was talking, but actually just the messages I've received off the back of it now, I knew that it would, I'd hoped it would help people. And actually it's proof that it has now. So I, you know, I wanted to get it out there because as I was talking more and more, I realized how common it was. They do look at me and think that I've got it. I do have it all figured out. And I think it's just proof that no, no one does. I definitely don't have it all figured out. So I think, you know, just sitting down, having that chat um, and talking more, I think for me, I felt vulnerable to do it because I'm still in a stage of, I'm learning myself. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of like really excited and looking forward to like a two year push to Paris. I really feel like it's a, I really feel like, I don't like to say a final two year push because my mind has completely gone from thinking that I'm done after Tokyo to now I'm back but almost a two year push where I can really kind of almost learn as much as I can about myself, but almost on that journey be completely open and honest whether a training's gone good or bad, it is what it is. And if I'm not ready for a comp and a comp's coming around quicker than I expected, like, it's fine. Yeah, I, I think as a gymnast, I kind of, 
I love being in the gym, so I kind of want to show what that's like. Almost a more insight. I think, I think, you yeah, know, when we spoke about me being a bit quiet on social media, I think throughout my whole career, I've only really showed if I've done a good go or my, the skill was perfect that time. So I think, yeah, I'll post it. So I'm kind of like thinking, well, why not? You know, if I've had a bad session, it's normal. Like it's normal. It's normal for people to go to work and have a bad day at work. It's normal for people just to have a bad day in general. If I have a bad session, I've almost changed my mindset in terms of, you know, it's almost a process that's what's important. It's almost going there and you know what, I'm, I'm trying my best. I know that this two years push to Paris will be a challenge. I've got Europeans and Worlds that I'm hoping to go to next year. And then I've got Europeans and Olympic Games when we hit 2024. So I'm excited to kind of give more of an insight into what training for an Olympic Games is like, but also show the reality of it really. But to everybody else, the end product is all everybody sees. But it's interesting how different I feel now to before Tokyo. I felt like I had literally the world on my shoulders. I think it helps me every time almost clear it up in my head how I'm actually feeling. Do you know what I mean? It's strange. So there we are, that's episode one of this journey to Paris. We're gonna be uploading every Saturday. That topic was almost a bit of a different one for me to talk about. I'm feeling more and more refreshed the more I do, and I know that it's helping so many people from the messages I'm getting. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking around if you're still here now, and I'll see you next Saturday.